a incredible. Hey, welcome, welcome, everybody. We are so excited to have you. I'm going to spotlight everybody so that we can see all three of our panelists simultaneously right now. And uh, I am super excited to get this going. We've got great uh, attendees from throughout the country right now. We got coast to coast, and I'm so excited for this topic and for these panelists. Uh, for those that know me, this is this one's really personal. I've been doing these webinars for over a year and a half. My name is Jason Johnson. I represent the Y Tri organization, and this particular topic is really, really personal. It's something I care very deeply about. It's something I get very personal about, and it's something that I think really um, altered my trajectory as a practitioner and as a school psychologist, and I'm so grateful to be joined by two experts uh, to learn from, from their experience and their expertise on this topic. Uh, we are going to be talking about using music to engage and motivate students today, and uh, I want to start by introducing our, our panelists here. We have an absolute uh, powerhouse panel. Uh, first, we got Laze Elliott, 35 mm. years in the entertainment is industry. Lays is a businessman known as a pioneering icon in hip hop and R&B, as well as in the international touring world. Uh, Lays, aka Lazy Lays Elliott, <laughs> is now putting his foot into broadcasting and global media over yeah. 25 million records sold. Latest Lays has worked with many giants in the recording industry, uh, not only as a multi-platinum producer, but also as a media and marketing exec working for years with executive media grants. Um, Lays recently founded T uh, Talos Media, which serves as a platform to advance children in the 21st century with new technology and media production and is on the board of the Off School Grounds Coalition. That's OSG. You can see him representing um, with his gear there. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have some incredible guests from the OSG family, and today is no exception. Welcome, Lays. We are thrilled to have you. Hey, how you guys doing? Glad to be here. I'm humbled and honored to be a part of this. Thank you very much, Jason, for, uh, for inviting me, and uh, I hope everybody's having a great day. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Damian Sweeney. Damien serves as the uh, program coordinator for comprehensive school counseling. Actually, this has changed, right? I'm reading your old info. Damien, yeah. give, give me your current title because I want to do I want to do what you're doing now justice because it's super cool and we're all really right. Sounds sounds good. Yeah. So uh, so I've recently been named the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion at the Kentucky Department of Education. Formerly the program coordinator for comp. Awesome. Thank you so much, Damien. And Damien is a, uh, a repeat panelist uh, with us. This is the is it a second or third time we've had you on. I think it's the third time now. And uh, I think Damien, the third. I think it's the third. I think you're right. Which puts you. That's like that's right up there. Damien always brings great, great information. Um, he's got a, a really incredible way of presenting it in a, in a really practical way. And I really admire his passion on, on the material he brings. Uh, prior to where he's at now with diversity inclusion and inclusion, uh, he oversaw the publication of the Kentucky Framework of Best Practices for School Counselors. He's contributed to guidance on how districts can facilitate conversations about race-based stress and trauma for districts and schools in Kentucky. He's also, uh, he was also published uh, in the Ask a Magazine, uh, titled Stand Up, Stand Together, uh, Passion for Change Agency and Social Justice. Dr. Sweeney served as a special education teacher, an English teacher, high school counselor, adjunct professor. Um, the list goes on. Damien, we're so happy to have you back. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, and then I am Jason Johnston, as I mentioned. Uh, I represent the Y Tri organization. I'm the lucky one that gets to serve as, as moderator and host for these. My background is I come from public ed. Uh, I, I was a school psychologist in the world of public education, got pulled over to the Y Tri organization about uh, oh, six years ago now when we realized we had a, a real common approach and passion for the topic of resilience. Uh, I had been published on the, on the topic of adolescent resilience and uh, we formed a, a pretty quick relationship and I oversee research development and uh, the training modules 
uh, for why try. And so the just a quick history, I've, I've given this a few times, but just to catch anybody up, because I suspect we've got some, some new guests with us. Uh, the history on these webinars is when the pandemic was kind of officially hit in early 2020, um, we were in a situation like a lot of people in education where we had to really dramatically pivot to be able to connect with our with our network of friends and colleagues. And so we did that the way everybody did using Zoom, using, using the internet. And these webinars were one of the first things that we really did to try to stay connected. And we realized really quickly the value in them that we've got uh, a, an important network of people that need to experience being together and learning from one another. And so we started bringing in experts uh, in, in different fields on a regular basis and, and try to lead these discussions. And it's turned into one of the, my very favorite things that I get to do. I, I get to be online and, and talk about the things I, I care the most about and, uh, and be with you all as guests. Now I'm gonna make one request before we jump into our, our content for the day. The request that I'm gonna make is I want everybody to take a look at the chat tool. Now the chat is an important part of these because that's where a lot of great ideas get shared. And on your chat tool, look at where you type your message and it'll say two, and then there's a little drop down menu and that's who you're sharing your message with. If that doesn't say to everyone, then not everybody can see your comments. And your comments are important because they, they bring your perspective and your experience to the discussion. So make that adjustment if you're willing, adjust it so you're sharing your comments with everybody. After you make that adjustment, go ahead and type in a hello or a good afternoon, wherever you're at, let us know, uh, say hi, blow up that, uh, that chat for us. And then uh, we're gonna get going with the discussion. I wanna jump right into, uh, right into the topic at hand. Um, we're scheduled to go for about an hour. We'll see how the discussion, uh, the discussion goes and where it takes us. But I wanted to start off just by throwing it out to our panelists and ask them to tell us a little bit about uh, what they've been up to uh, recently as far as uh, working on media and engagement for students. And I was wondering maybe if we could start with Lays, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to. And then uh, after we hear from Lays, uh, let's hear from Damien and what you've been up to with this. Well, well good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Lazy Lays and the world famous MOP and OSG First Family. Um, uh, they call me Uncle Lays now. Uh, I've been in the game a long time and uh, I'm a producer, executive producer. I've, I've I work with everybody from 50 Cent to Buster Rhymes to Jay-Z to Victoria Beckham to Buju Banton and reggae. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of work in, in the music business as a producer, as an executive producer. Uh, I've toured the world. And since the, uh, since the pandemic, actually, uh, the touring stopped in the world. And I think it's funny how things happen, you know, and I want to just first of all, just uh, shout out uh, a heartfelt shout out to everybody that was lost during the pandemic and all the people whose lives were changed during the pandemic. I know that things happen in the world and we, we are definitely are going to be strong and we're going to continue to move forward. And in my life changed uh, because the touring world stopped. Um, and now um, I was introduced into the OSG family by Dennis McKeezy. And because of that, I've been able to sort of uh, really meet people like you guys and the Why Try guys. And, and I'm really uh, just really happy with all the great work that you guys have been doing. And with that, I then uh, started a company called Talos Media, where we create and build studios and broadcast studios for schools. I'm in about 25, 30 schools now all over the country, LA, uh, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, New Jersey and New York, uh, Brook, all through Brooklyn and everything. And, and the thing is, uh, what, what I found with my broadcasting studios and podcast rooms that I've been building is that a lot of kids have been really loving it. They've been into it because they love to make music. And we've been teaching kids how to program and produce music and produce beats. And listen, uh, you know, I, I, I work with the best. So I only, I only want to give everybody all the information and knowledge that I have. So thank you guys for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Damien, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and, and how that idea of, of media and engagement kind of interse intersects with the work that you've been doing. Sure. Yeah, my album just came out. I've got 
um, a lot of, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to connect with Lay's. I mean, gosh, 25 million albums, all these famous people. Um, it's, it's such an honor to be with you. Um, for me, it's all about modeling. You know, it's, it's about um, modeling what we hope other educators will practice in, here in Kentucky. Um, so whether it's with the Kentucky School Counseling Association or with the Kentucky Counseling Association or with, um, with individual presentations to schools or districts, um, it is modeling um, using media, it's modeling using music um, in our practice as well. You know, making sure that people know that music is a universal language. It's something that we might not always agree on everything, but music can help um, bring us together. It can, it can help unify us. So, um, so I've been doing different presentations with that, um, presentations uh, solely on using music in small group counseling or individual counseling, um, but also, you know, in just about every presentation I do, I try and, um, try and model uh, using a video, using, using music somehow. Awesome. Thank you, Damien. And uh, I think that's one of the things we've all connected on. And I think it's one of the great things that the, the OSG group is a, a nice example of. And really, we've been trying to do it as white try as well Is we all approach a lot of these topics from slightly different angles, you know, maybe different levels of being a practitioner or, or expertise, but it, it all comes together. And, and I, that's one of the, the awesome things is how much we can, we can learn from one another on this. So one of the things I wanted to start with, and, and I think it might be helpful, is I want to I wanna put Lays on the spot a little bit and ask Lays if you'd be willing to share just a little bit more about your background and how you ended up kind of where you're at now as far as uh, an individual that is now engaging with schools and with kids, trying to really help them um, when it comes to motivation and engagement. Because I think your path and your story is, is powerful and, and it gives some nice context to kind of how you got to where you're at today. And I think it'll set us up for the, the next part of the discussion. Well, um, I, I come from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. Um, everybody knows people like Mike Tyson and uh, uh, some great acts and people, even Michael Jordan comes from, from, from Brooklyn, New York. And, um, and uh, it's, it's a tough city. I grew up in a, in a tough way. And uh, luckily enough, when I went into the service, uh, I went to the guard and uh, I started to travel the country. I never knew anything about what's going on. Most people in Brownsville only know what's happening in Brooklyn and Brownsville. And so I traveled to Oklahoma and I started to you know, when I was in the military and I started to learn that there's a whole world out there. And so on the way back from the military, I traveled the country and started meeting people. And I said, wow, man, this is a great experience for me. And it kind of changed the way I framed my life and what I thought about people. So when I got into the music business, I realized that the world is so small and I wanted to travel and meet all the different types of people. Now, remember when I'm in the music business, when I started, hip hop was at kind of its infancy, infancy where we just really just started to get into hip hop. This thing of ours, we call it this thing of ours, that's hip hop, this music. And by the way, first of all, I did some research on Dr. Damien Sweeney, you are a G, straight up and down. Salute to you, man. I, I appreciate your work in the game and what you're doing for education because I had no understanding that this is what we needed and you guys have been warriors. One of my albums I put out is called Warriors. And you guys have been warriors in this in this field all the time. So I think it's, I think we would be remiss from from the entertainment side if we didn't pour in all of our knowledge into the world of education and really call it edutainment, you know, as opposed to just education. And and quite honestly, everybody that I work with in the in the industry, from the big from the big guys to the little guys we never ever thought about the effect that we had on education and how we could actually apply some of the technologies that we helped to invent, um, even as far as recording with Pro Tools and digital recording. I was there for that entire transition and I saw it coming. And I'm so glad that now I have the ability to now sort of uh, get involved and sort of get some of the kids involved because they because some of the kids are faster than us now. They know what's happening already. So I want to apply some of uh, music business theory and music theory and, and broadcast theory to some of the things that they're doing so that they can sort of be on the next level. Because even some of my broadcast friends, they all tell me that had they had this opportunity to learn this um, in, in, uh, in, in elementary and in middle school and high school, they would be even further along than they are now. So 
quite honestly, through all of that traveling and touring and working with guys like DJ Premier and all these other guys that I've, that I consider my brothers and, and Pete Rock and, you know, arm in arm, the guys that I love, um, uh, to get turned on to this and to be able to sort of take what I have in my brain and sort of just share it with the, with the world. I am honored to do that. So yeah, I'm here because I'm here for that particular, for that specific reason so that I can share what I know. And um, so that's maybe somebody can come out and be, you know, not just the next lays, but the next lays times, times a hundred, you know. That's awesome. I love that. I appreciate you sharing. And one of the things I love about that is I think it, um, I think it crosses into a couple really significant areas. First of all, you know, the way you're describing it is there, there is a trade element to this. Like this is yeah. something that people can actually, kids can actually pursue, you know, from an industry standpoint. But well, then there's I multiple, think- multiple trades, uh, to be honest with you, not just, and I don't want to cut you off, but let me just say this, there's multiple trades because um, there's not just engineering, there's also programming, there's also uh, design. I wanted to be an architect as a kid and, um, you know, I didn't follow that dream. And now I get, I get a chance to design and build because Talos is a design company first. And, and um, so there's so many different little timbers to this conversation where we can say, you not only could be an engineer, you could be a, 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 you could be a studio manager, you could be an advertising agent. There's so many different ways the entertainment business can teach you how to run all these different things in life. So, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is a lot. And, and and quite honestly, there's so much you can gain from just, just grabbing pieces of this. Yeah, for real. I love that. So there's that real practical piece. Yeah. But then the flip side of it that I think all of us are equally passionate about is this is also something that can give voice and can teach and really facilitate some really critical like skills for living, skills for connection, and kind of this deep level of, of humanity and almost have like a therapeutic side as well that is equally beneficial, that can really, really um, bring some, some color and some context to our lesson and our academic material. You know, we've got a lot of educators on here whose job yeah. is to teach academics. Well, media, uh, proper use of media and music can help us better do our job of delivering academics as well from a relevance and a connection standpoint. So, so it's about a lot of it is, has to do with a couple things, right? Uh, a lot of it has to do with controlling your narrative. And one of the things about controlling narratives is teaching children how to articulate. Now, uh, we did a class, uh, shout out to Raven Askew, PS354. We would do workshops in, in Queens and we would do them with third graders. And so we started these workshops with third graders. And um, when I first went into the classroom, all the kids had their heads down. They were, you know, a little bit loopy. But by the time uh, we finished our 10 workshops, all the children, all, all the kids, they were, they were there and they were speaking. Yes, my name is. And they would articulate anything they wanted to articulate after 10 workshops. The, the thing is, our children want a voice. They want to be confident in their voice. And sometimes it's just showing them how to speak. And we would do small exercises where we would project our voices in a room and things of that nature, things that I would do with singers that I would program or I would, you know, I would produce. I would produce a singer and I would teach them how to project their voice and be on the mic, as my friend Buster Rhymes says. And they love to do that. They love to hear themselves on the mic. They would they would appreciate that. And that is the first beginning to broadcast 101. You can you understand the power of your voice. And I think as long as humanity has been here, communication has been our greatest discovery, even better than fire. Amen. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of the lays you touched on it a little bit, but I'd love to hear from Damien and then, and then even any, if you have any more that come to mind lays, but I'd love to have you share with the, with our audience here. What are some of the specific things? Because I think one of the challenges with like media and music is sometimes it feels like this big picture idea, but if I'm like a classroom teacher or school principal or something, I, I may not really know you know, what are some things that I could do? I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of the things that you've done or you've seen done that have have really been like cool examples of using media and music to help improve student engagement. Uh, maybe we could start with you, Damien, and then, and then sure. throw it back to Lays after that. 
Sure. So, so when I first um, became a teacher, I was a special education teacher, and I had students with mild mental mild mental disabilities along with emotional and behavioral disabilities. And so, finding ways to engage my students was always difficult, right? But when we when we would bring in music, when we would let them um, have voice and choice, so they could actually introduce me to music too. So it wasn't just, you know, the guy in the front of the room saying, oh, you got to check this out. Oh, we're going to listen to this today. It was, well, what do you like? You know, and, and I'm a sucker for music with a meaning. So it always had to have, you know, it always had to have a powerful message, but they could bring that in. And all of a sudden we became this little classroom community, right? Where we're sharing ideas. It's not all about the teacher at the front of the room that is that is expressing all of this knowledge onto his students. It is, we are co-learning together. Um, there's this really cool concept uh, called transformative social emotional learning. And, you know, I love SEL. I, I love social emotional learning. And I think that one way of, of incorporating music and media is finding ways to connect it to the five social emotional learning competencies. I think that's a really um, feasible way. All right, but I also, in my experience, whenever I can find ways to bring music in or bring a video in or have little snapshots of this or that, I actually get more instructional time, right? I actually get more engagement and, and more time that is on topic, right? Um, I think a lot of people, are very concerned in today's educational world about, you know, about the tests and and I got to make sure that all of my standards are being taught and I've got to make sure that I'm doing everything just so. But with music and with media, it's actually going, when you incorporate that stuff, it's actually going to give you more time back because your kids are going to be that much more engaged. And it kind of goes back to that Rita Pearson quote on her TED talk where she talks about, you know, kids aren't going to learn from people they don't like, you know, and by bringing in some of that stuff, you're finding cool ways to connect with your kids. You're finding um, things that you think is going to connect with them. Um, they're going to respect you for trying to find, for taking that positive risk and, and, um, and, and working to find ways to en engage them and connect with them. It's just going to give you that time back. So, so that would be my first suggestion. Um, I have also, I, I love using music, but also using the lyrics, right? So, so printing out lyrics, um, of course, you know, in a, in a school environment, we have to edit those lyrics when they have curse words. Um, but I love to have my students uh, annotate them. So as we're listening, annotate them, circle things that stand out, put a star by things that really hit you different, um, underline something that, that really uh, made you feel something. And when we do that, those annotations, those lyrics, they serve as the foundation of a conversation. The evidence is there, the research is there. Storytelling actually is very healing. You, you talked about the word therapeutic. Um, earlier, you know, and storytelling is really therapeutic and healing for kids. Um, it's helpful for kids, right? Kids need to know that other people are going through some of the same things that they're going through or, or have gone through that in the past. And I feel like music is just one way of doing that, right? We're reminding kids, oh, remember that, that journey that you went on or remember that experience that you had or remember that difficulty or that obstacle that you had to overcome? Tell us a little bit about it if you feel comfortable. And when they do, this is what you'll hear. Oh my God, from other students, you'll hear, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one that went through something like that. Oh my gosh, I thought, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that other people had those experiences, you know? So, and then they start to tell a story. Um, so that is, that is my suggestion, um, you know, uh, and, and what I've found to be really successful is, is finding ways to connect kids to music with a message, um, give them voice and choice so they can actually say, you know, I want to try this song um, or I want you to check out this song, but then have them annotate those lyrics and then tell those stories as well. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Damien. I love hearing that. I, I'm taking Damien's been on here with me before. He sees me like I'm taking mad notes the whole time he's talking because you, you, you see how incredible Damien it like like, you know, I, I have I have applause and stuff on my roadcaster. I wanted when he got finished, I wanted to press the applause button so people could hear him. I mean, he's, he's, he's right on. He's right on the money, man. He's right on the money. <laughs> Absolutely. I, the, I just I had an aha moment, Damien, while you were talking. So 
one of the big things we're really, really trying to focus on right now is like good, healthy, trauma-informed models to really provide space for kids to heal through, you know, trauma that they've dealt with or that they're currently experiencing. And some of the common pillars of trauma-informed models are safety and then voice and choice that Damien mentioned a couple of times. And I just realized, you know, for me, music was always one of the key pieces. Like when I was doing one-on-one -on -one counseling in schools, and, and also in groups, but it was really transformative. And I, I think my aha moment was that I was doing that before I was familiar with like what a quote unquote trauma informed model was. But I think music is, is really a, a secret ingredient for that. When it gives voice to kids who haven't been able to articulate something and they acknowledge, like you said, that somebody else has felt that, that makes them feel safe and it brings that voice and choice. And then when they have some input on, the actual music that's being processed and discussed, I mean, that, that becomes the, the secret sauce, right? Yeah. Can I, can I just expand on that a little bit? Um, an another way of, another way of doing that is um, I love to find beats for kids so that kids can write. Um, they can write, we, you know, we never limit them to say, you've got to write, you know, a song, but we always say, write four bars, write four lines. It can rhyme, it can be a song, it can be just free writing, but how can you, um, how can you use the vibe from this beat? And really it's just a, a, a journaling exercise. Well, what I find with educators and kids alike is that often they will they will write to the beat they, and they will actually want to perform. Um, and often they go really, really deep with things that they have experienced. Um, there's this really cool uh, 60 second lesson from Edutopia. You'll have to check it out. Um, it's called a snowball fight. And you know, you tell the kids that this is we're gonna this is what we're gonna do afterwards, but you can have them write that those lyrics or or whatever it is to that beat. You can ask them to feel free to perform it if they want. If they choose not to, you can also do a snowball fight. And with this snowball fight, you take those lyrics that that that, that your kids just wrote and you say, All right, everybody, everybody throw them. You know, and then when you're, whenever you pick those lyrics up, you don't know whose you got, but you read those and you start for the first time realizing, oh my gosh, I thought, I thought that I was going through quite a bit, but other kids in my class, like right here, they're going through a lot too. Um, and it's that first, it's another opportunity to empathize with kids. So, um, so finding that cool beat, you can find, uh, find great beats on YouTube. Um, I'm sure Lays has some other resources for that. Um, and then giving kids an opportunity to, to write is also really powerful. And like I said, I have gone to, um, I've gone to, to Western Kentucky and I've, I've been in a, a room full of, uh, full of school counselors who said, no, we want to rap. We want to rap. And they pulled out their lyrics. They stood up and they rapped in front of the whole group. So really powerful exercise. Very trauma-informed. So, so good. And thank you, Molly. Molly just linked that Edutopia link for the snowball toss in the in the chat. Um, hey, Lays, any, any thoughts in response to that? And then also, in addition to that, Lays, I think some people would be really interested in hearing in a little bit more detail, a little bit about what you've been doing and kind of how you've set up some of the, the workshops that you have in the schools that you've been working with. I, I think people would be interested in, in how you're, you're going about that. Well, a couple, just to add to uh, what Dr. Sweeney just talked about, in, uh, in a couple of schools, what we do is, you know, he talked about getting beats and stuff on YouTube. What we actually do is we teach kids how to produce. So we actually put stations like in one uh, research and service in Brooklyn, we actually have a class where we teach kids how to actually make their own beats and make their own projects and their own expressions. So we want to start it from the beginning to the end. And uh, we we bring in the equipment and we we get we make these little stations and these kids get there and they start to produce. And each one of these stations, you can actually make an entire album on the station. And uh, we teach them the programming. We teach them um, how to uh, sound manipulation. We teach them things like compression and, and, and how to actually put their song together, song format. And then, um, and then once they finish their project, they can then 
play their project and perform their project for the class so or or the, whatever audience that we can put together for the classroom so that out of that you find some amazing talent like one one uh, guy is a classical pianist and he didn't understand how to program his beats and um so we started showing him how to program his beats and now he adds his his his, his experience as a classical pianist and it's not all rap. Sometimes a lot of it's rap, but some people like to sing. Some people like to just play music. Whatever your creative expression is, we sort of can help you get there by creating these rooms. Um, there's another school, Pharos Academy in the Bronx, where we created, um, I, you know, I call it a bat studio. Uh, it's a full library. And then when you, uh, when you hit a button, boop, it opens up and, and you walk into a full studio. And it's a beautiful studio. It's hidden, though. You walk in, you think you're in a library, right? You press the button, boom, it's opened up. So the door cool. opens up, and you're in a full, full recording studio. Um, these are just some of the some of the different ideas. And in that studio, we teach uh, we teach kids how to not only um, not only write, uh, make music, but also engineer, also produce, also we teach them how to take vocals. We teach them how to how to sort of use their vocal on a microphone where they can like, um, let me shout out. I don't, I don't like to name drop. We talked about this yesterday, but I want to shout out one of the best vocalists in the world. Her name is Patty LaBelle. And one thing she used to do is a trick she used to do. She taught, well, she taught how, me how to, to use my vocal to record stacked vocals in the room. So where I would, uh, you know, a singer would say, hello, hello, hello. And then they would turn their head and say, hello, hello, hello. And that's how she would control the volume in her stack vocals. And she would turn her head and control the volume like this. And so as she got closer to the mic, it would change. And it was such a beautiful, she was such an expert at it. And I didn't realize how great of an, of an artist she was in doing that. And so there are so many different things you can learn. Uh, by just learning mic manipulation and 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 uh, signal uh, signal feed and things of that nature, compression and uh, uh, gates and deessers and all that kind of stuff. So we try to teach that, and um, it's been such a success, and the kids love it. Everyone loves it because they get to express themselves the way they want to express themselves. And even kids that didn't want to do anything, because there was a couple of kids that would come in and be like, "I don't want to do this because I'm 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 afraid to show you how good I am." And then once we got him in there, you, you'd blown away. You're like, oh, my gosh, this is such an amazing talent. I mean, I got to shout out some of the kids out here. And I don't know how many are out there in this, in this, uh, in this meeting today. But I'm telling you right now, just leave it up to the kids. They're going to straighten this whole world out. They're amazing. They're all, they are amazing. I've met some amazing kids in this last couple of years that we've been putting this together with OSG. So, yeah. That's some of the things we can do, and um, and if you'd like to if you like to build it, if you want to get help building it, if you need some help organizing it and showing you how to get this done, because I don't think that this was thought about before. This wasn't something that they said we can now compete like the same equipment that a Jay Z or a or a Buster Rhymes or a, you know or a Drake would use. We put the same equipment in the studio, you know, in, in the schools, and I think if they can compete at that level. The next Jay Z, the next Drake, the next Kanye West will be amazing because we we get them started there early. Jason, I would just add that we've done something similar at uh, Seneca High School in Louisville, where I'm where, where I was a high school counselor, and we had a we had an after school program called Renaissance, um, and we had we partnered with a community um, a community center. So this was very accessible. Community center came in less than ten times for a semester. Um, we gave the kids a lesson, so we had time to kind of bond and tell those stories. But then this community center brought in a mobile studio um, so they could work on their art that way. They learned how to write lyrics. They learned how to produce. And then the culminating event was actually going to a studio to record a song that they had worked on for those 10 weeks. So, um, so this, you know, so this doesn't necessarily have to be you don't have to have all of the equipment at your fingertips, I think is what, what both Lays and I are trying to say. You know, there are really cool and creative ways that you can do this, and you can probably find resources in your community as well. Out of curiosity. And just to, just to add to that, uh, also what I found is that by building the spaces in the schools, the community can use it as well. Uh, so uh, what's crazy was I found that some of the parents – wanted to come and do their own podcast, their own broadcast. They wanted to come in and they had some creative aspirations that they wanted to utilize. So this was great because now all of a sudden you galvanize 
uh, the community around the school. And I think to me, of all the things that are the most uh, essential is to make the school a place where everyone wants to go. Man, if, I cannot agree with that more. That is yeah. so key. Yeah. 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 And I think that's one of the things that's really impressed us most with OSG. So you see Lay's wearing his OSG gear and he's part of this group. It's off school grounds. We've had, you, you got to check them out. We've had multiple, multiple representatives from the OSG family on, but they are consistently absolutely committed to making this a community process where you have schools working with communities um, and it creates a, a really powerful formula. I did want to ask Damien, not to, not to put you on the spot, but I am curious uh, with your Menaissance group, how did you connect up with the community support there? Did they find you or did you have to find them? So we actually, they, they, they found us, they found our district. So I, I worked, I, I continue to work in one of the biggest districts in the, in the country. Um, and they reached out to our, um, our office of uh, diversity, equity, and poverty. And they, they knew that I loved hip hop and school counseling and then called me and said, this is something that we're interested in and in starting. Would you, would you have an interest in doing this at Seneca? And I was all in, of course. Awesome. Thank you. And I know we've, uh, we've, We've, I've had expressed, we've had some really interesting guests on the past that have been really gifted at connecting up with, uh, with community resources. There's, there's, you know, a pretty consistent model. If, if we, if educators put a request out there to communities, um, usually eventually something will, will turn up. There's a lot of great community resources that don't know how to initiate that. And so sometimes just putting the request out there is going to be kind of the important starting point. Hundred percent. I think you. I think anybody on this call can be proactive and say this is something we're interested in starting. You know, you can start it in your office, in your classroom. You can find a space in your school. But if you put that need out to that community, um, my hope is that you will be connected. Thank you, um, Lays. You agree with that? Uh, absolutely. I, I think. I, I think for without the community. Uh, we see it where the community, the community is not engaged and we see where education suffers. We need the community. Uh, we, all have, we all are one community. We have to come together as, as a family and take care of our children because ultimately the children are going to take care of this planet. And they're going to take care of us, but we need the community to get to come together. That's why I believe of all things, the school is the center of the community. Uh, it's the center of it. And if we can make the school the place to be, you know, then we can win. And then all of us, and, and, and we'll solve so many problems that we seem to look past the school to solve with there's so many problems. I'm not saying that, that the, that, that the principal has to carry that weight, but the community can get involved and we can find ways that we can utilize it. And that's why we, that's why we put these rooms in these schools, because even after school, the most activity in some of these rooms are after school. Well, they can yes. come in and think about this when in situations where we have uh, we have uh, emergencies or or or, or 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 disasters or something like that. Imagine if we had your own radio station in your school because the school can now project out and you can communicate to the school. That that's how you can get to the different communities. These are so many ways that we can utilize um, the school in our communities. I mean, listen, we're paying for it with our tax dollar we have to make use of these. It, it, school should not end at three o'clock. Let me, let me ask this to the audience. If you wouldn't mind um, just briefly putting in the chat box your, your passion project. I think I, one recommendation that I would have for all educators out there is that every year there should be a passion project. What is something that you are excited about that wakes you up in the morning on those cold, well, here in Kentucky, it gets really cold here in uh, November and December. What is that one thing that you want to do or that you are doing this year that's going to get you up and excited? For me, this music, this hip hop and school counseling, this hip hop and, and teaching, this has always been a passion project of mine. You know, um, it, it's always been something that I saw as a positive risk. And I would 100% um, suggest that you take that positive risk every single year. It, and some of your communities, if you go to your principal and you say, I want to start a music studio, I want to put a music studio in the, in the school, they might look at you like you're a little bit crazy, 
But if you can back it up and say, I know that this is going to support our students. I know that this is going to bring our families in. This is going to create more community involvement. That is a positive risk worth taking. Uh, so that is, my, uh, that is my recommendation. Positive risks and passion projects. Oh, my goodness, Damien, you're giving me goosebumps. That, that idea of positive risk, I think, is such a, a critical point. Um, because it really has to be like, we have to take brave steps as educators, but you do have to find that thing where it is a positive risk where you say, this is, this is worth the risk because it connects with that thing that gets me up. I love that. And we're getting, I'm, I'm getting fired up looking at all these comments in the chat. Um, this is reminded me, I think this is where I, I think the three of us have all connected on some common ground. So the why try approach, um, for those not familiar, like at its most simple form, the why try approach is built on a thing we call the new three R's. And the three R's to the why try approach are relationships, relevance, and resilience. And I think the music piece connects to all three of those. I think it develops relationships. I think it certainly helps contribute towards resilience, but where I think it's really, really powerful is from a relevant standpoint. You know, I mentioned we all have our job, like the thing that, that we're employed to do, which requires us to deliver content. We deliver curriculum, we deliver intervention, but our goal is that whatever we deliver, the kids are going to connect with. And that only happens when it is, um, delivered in a way that's relevant. Uh, one of the things I've heard you mention, maybe we can start with you on this one, Damien, and then, and then throw it over to Lays after. Damien, I've heard you mention um, that, you, you have, you, that you do have some ideas on how it is possible to align music or media with your, your learning objectives. And I, I know I've heard Lays talk about some of these as well in a really impressive way. But Damien, could you share some tips with, with our audience here for maybe ways you can do that? Like, how can you align music and media with, with the, the learning objectives that you have within a classroom? Yeah, um, I mean, it takes, it takes intentionality and, and creativity and, um, of course, connection, right? So if you're looking at your standards, Right. And Kentucky, we use um, we, we have the Kentucky academic standards. I was a high school English teacher, so I'm just I'm looking at some of our standards right now. Um, one of those is determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in the text, including figurative and connotative meanings. Analyze the cumulative impact of specific word choices on meaning and tone. Can't you do that with with a song by Jay-Z, or can't you do that with, you know, with a, with a track by Rihanna or Eminem or Logic or Drake, you know, um, you have to be intentional and say, these are, these are the standards that I'm going to choose, uh, that I'm going to, that I'm going to teach. How can I find those positive risks that we just spoke about, and how can I connect it to either music or media? I think every good, just, just about every good lesson is going to have a little bit of, uh, of one of those, right? Um, think back about to some of your most powerful lessons. Most likely, well, at least in my experience, um, it has had one or the other. Awesome. Thank you. Lays, thoughts on that? What are some of the connection pieces you see between music and media and those real practical skills that kids should be getting out of the classroom? I actually, I actually have uh, some real life uh, experiences with this. Uh, one, um, I travel. I've been traveling Europe for the last twenty years. I spend about six months a year out of Europe, and they apply so much of hip hop to their modern day life. They are uh, some kids will come up to me and say, "I learned hip hop by reading the back of albums. I learned English by learning reading the back of albums." Uh, some kids would say. It formed the way that I approach life, the way I think about things, just my moral compass and what, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying the negative stuff, but just the, the stories of victory, the stories of, of, you know, you know, all those great stories in hip hop, the music was cultured. And even now, when you look at the Olympics, they even put breakdancing in the Olympics. This is how music and our culture has affected the world on, on, on many ways. I think America, as much as we are, ahead of the world in so many different ways, we are underutilizing the power of music in our schools because in other countries, they are utilizing the power of music. It's, it's part of their life. It has to be. And, 
and they really pay, pay attention to this. I spent a lot of time in Austria, and anybody who knows Austria, that's where you can go and see all the greats, uh, 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 Beethoven, you know, Mozart, all, you can see all the greats uh, uh, performances, and they still continue to carry that. And I find that the art and culture of music in the lives of children, and from, from young to old, it really um, it, it gives you a richer life. It makes your life richer. And to what and I got to really take a second and commend Dr. Sweeney, man, because he is championing something that really we need in our, more in our communities. I think sometimes they put the music on the back burner. But just like you have a gym, you should have a studio in your school. Just like you have just like you have a lunchroom, you should have a broadcast center in your school. You should be able. These are tools that we use now, especially now where everything is digital and everybody is streaming and we all live in these boxes. This is a this is preparing our children for the future. And if we do not prepare our children from the for the future, especially in this country, we will find ourselves behind the times. I think it's time for us to step up and move forward and prepare our children to take over the world. And the way you do it is you give them the tools that they need and they will figure it out. Just show them how to use stuff and they will make it work. And you will see the next Mozart, the next Beethoven, the next Picasso. You will see all of these greats come out of this if you give these children the tools. Lays, uh, let me, uh, Jason, if you don't mind me asking Lays a quick question. Um, so we have funding for nine calming slash mindfulness rooms in, in Kentucky. And we're, we're excited to, to use those nine as models for other people uh, within each region to come and see. If our budget was, I don't know, a grand, um, what would be the equipment that you would say, you've got to get this, you've got to make sure you get this? Uh, it all depends, but I would I would immediately say if you had $1,000, I would get you a Rodecaster Pro and I'd get you a small road microphone for under $1,000. You can get those two things and you can put them in a room with, with a set of headphones and you can start that process and where the Rodecaster Pro will help the kids to, to learn how to project themselves. Uh, the calming rooms, I don't know if you're going to use the ones that we buy because we have the same ones, the four by eight calm rooms that we use where you can go in there and sort of isolate yourselves and sort of mm -hmm. sound proof and all that kind of stuff. But we, we use those, we use those as well. We, 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 we turn those into little broadcast rooms where kids can go in and broadcast and be a part of it. And it's great. And um, I'm just so glad you said that, but yeah, I would get a roadcaster pro. Uh, this right. is an in industry standard. I'll even show it to you. Check it out. Look at that. <laughs> I got I love it. Right it. Here. I love it. Well, I'm thinking, right you know, if we've got these, if we've got these rooms where, where kids can really, um, you know, focus on becoming present, maybe they, they have, uh, they have had to overcome some trauma or, or they have had to overcome some barriers, then why not have them as dual purpose rooms? You know, why not Absolutely. be able to utilize them in some of those after school programs? So I love that idea. Thank you for sharing that. Even just having, the, and just to add to that, just to have it a space where they can speak, because when you can hear yourself and you can talk about what's on your mind, they could put some music into their ears. Mm -hmm. Like they could, they could, they could put like some calming you know, whatever, whatever music they want, they could just take it and say, you know, I want to put some calm, calming music into my ears so I can go, you know, I, I hear some calming music, some relaxing music, boom, watch me. Just, I just want to talk about my day. Yes. And the music could play in their ears, whatever. It could be hip hop, but this is just calming music. And they can just talk about today, my mom made me clean my room and I didn't like it. And this is the way I feel about it. And, and they could really express themselves. Yeah, it, for it, sure. It doesn't have to be that. It could be hip hop. It could be anything, yeah. and they can work. They can get it out of the system. Right. So, Patricia, when we when we talk about mindfulness, there's this great TED talk called "Why Aren't We Teaching Mindfulness in Schools?" And they they explain that there's research that shows that basically when students have access to mindfulness and a reset, it not only helps those students, but it also helps your teachers. So, um, so when we talk about mindfulness and calming rooms, that that's kind of where that came from. That's a great idea, by the way. That's so good. I want to share a couple of our, uh, these are all things I've done, a couple of additional strategies. I've shared this with some people before, but I'm going to share a couple additional strategies that don't even need technology. Like the technology is, is really important. And I absolutely agree with that, Roadcaster. Um, those are great starting points. But if you're looking for even something lower technology than that, 
there's some there's some practices you can do just in how you engage and the prompts that you give your kiddos, like in how they respond. You can take a journal response and mix it up and say, rather than write your response, find me a song or song title that expresses how you feel about this theme. Um, give an assignment instead of like writing down your life story, pick three songs that are important to you. And I want you to present them to me and tell them why they represent who you are. Create a playlist with your kids and connect it to your learning concept. So if I'm teaching on, you know, next week, if I'm going to be teaching on decisions and consequences, I might give the assignment, the homework assignment. We're going to talk about decisions and consequences. Let's make a playlist of songs that talk about decisions and consequences and build that after that. Play, name that genre. Talk about music, not just as entertainment, but as art, as culture, as something that expresses a feeling that another human has felt. And then lastly, you know, we've already talked about it, but I did this change one-on-one -on -one settings for me. I had a kid that wouldn't talk. He was, uh, he, was, he was very upset. He was mad. I couldn't get him to talk. I handed him my computer and I said, you don't have to say a word to me, but we got to communicate. Find me a song that tells me how you're feeling right now. And very similar to what Lays did, except for rather than um, uh, calming music, it was very aggressive music. And that's how he expressed himself. And then I, I responded back in kind. I said, can I share a song with you that tells you who I am? We exchanged like three songs a piece. And we had this incredible moment of connection where we expressed ourselves through songs without talking. But that became a kind of a hallmark for how I was doing one-on-one -on -one counseling in a really, really powerful way. And you can do all of those type of things without even having to have this, this technology net underneath you to support it. Without a doubt, I, I would say that um, music can serve for kids who feel like they, they don't have a voice to share. Um, so I, I, I love the idea of having them tell you what song describes how you're feeling. I think that's brilliant. And, and just in, in, uh, in fairness to technology, uh, the technology nowadays is a sort of a micro of what it used to cost now because it's all been, you know, it's made smaller now and we can do so much more with less now. So it's not a big deal anymore where these things were, what we're doing now would have costed us tens of thousands of dollars to do it. It's really now it's hundreds of dollars. So, you know, if, 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 if you, I'm not saying everybody can't, can, but if you could, I would invest in some technology because it helps you get to where you got to get to a lot easier and you're I, I more totally focused agree. on creativity than the process of being and, creative. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I think that's where you start to get dual and triple purposes out of it as well. That's yep. where it can extend into that trade piece. And this really is skills that can help them um, in, in the long, in the long term in life. Like this is skills that can help them from a, an employment standpoint after school, um, after they're done with their education process. Um, so I, 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 I'm glad you mentioned that, Lays. I, I think that's a, an important piece. Shoot for the stars on this stuff if you can. Yep. We actually use music in our individual learning plan here in Kentucky. So that helps kids kind of figure out what kind of post-secondary goals that they want. And what we always say is that kids can't know where they're going until they know who they are. So we, we, use, um, we use this track by Logic um, called 1-800, uh, which is actually all about suicide prevention. And we use another song um, that's called uh, by a, an artist named Tadashi that's called You Just Gotta Live um, and have them kind of explore that. And that's one way of also doing kind of character education, allowing kids to figure out, you know, who do I want to be myself and who do I want to be for others? Um, so that's another cool concept that you might take with you. So good. Oh my goodness. We're, we're running short on time. I'm trying to decide where I want to go. Um, maybe talk just a little bit. Let's do one last question and then we'll wrap it up. Um, one of the things that continually gets expressed, I think, to all of us is the challenge in motivating unmotivated students, you know, kids that may just not want to be there. I'm curious your opinion and your experience on how media and, and music can help with that challenge, because I think that's one of the most significant hurdles. I, I personally train thousands of educators and mental health professionals a year um, on this material. And the most common frustration I hear is 
what do I do with my kiddos that are just not motivated? And, and I really think music and media can be a, a significant, significant piece in that. But I'll, I'll throw that to you, Damien and Lays. What's your, uh, what's, what's your experience and your opinion on that, how, how that can assist with motivation? I'm going to be quick because, um, uh, you know, obviously uh, I want to let Damien expound on this because he's the, the educator in the, in the room. And I want to make sure that he's experienced this. Uh, my, my experience in education has been very limited and short. and I'm, I'm, I'm learning as well. And um, what I found, though, what worked for me was very simple. Um, I would just let the kids hear their voice. And once they started to hear their voices, they started to get creative. And uh, once they started to get creative, then they started to open up. I think a lack of confidence from what I understand, where I come from, a lot of kids, they acted out out of lack of confidence and uh, really just, they didn't really feel they had any options. And once I, once I, I didn't have a voice, once I, once I sort of um, showed, showed a kid how to uh, use his voice, um, he sort of changed his mode and he started to become more creative and he started to open up. And that's just my very limited experience. I mean, I, I don't have the years in education as some of you guys do. You guys are real warriors. I've been on the road and I, you know, that's something that I've always done. I've always jumped in front of a stage in front of thousands of people. And it was always, it, it was easy for me, but it's not easy for everyone. And, um, and I, I do believe that uh, what helped me in, in my tactic was just to let them hear their voice. And over time, uh, they became more confident. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, th I think Lays, I think your lack of experience in education is actually really helpful for the conversation because you bring new eyes. You you come you come to the conversation from uh, through a fresh lens. You know, so um, so I appreciate everything that you've shared today. Uh, for me, for me, it's all about um, authentic relationships. I will tell you, we had kids that were <laughs> unmotivated every single day, but this is what's going to happen. Jason, if you're this unmotivated kid that's not really showing an interest, every time you walk by my office or every time I see you in the classroom, I'm going to be like, what's up, Jason? How you doing? Um, whenever you wear that 21 Pilots shirt, I'm going to be like, I'm going to connect with you about that shirt, right? We're going to talk about it. I'm going to have things in my office that hopefully um, when you look in there, you're going to be like, oh, I didn't realize that you were into that. So I'm going to find ways to connect with you on that stuff. I'm going to continue to say your name. I am continue to say, Jason, every single time I see you, Jason, how you doing? What's going on today, Jason? And, and you might walk away from me every single time for the first semester, for, you know, for the first 75 days. But eventually, eventually, in my experience, kid, when, when something's going down, when something's going on, kids will remember he takes the time. He wants to get to know me. And although I haven't put that much time into that relationship, I know that he is supportive um, with no conditions. Right. And so eventually that kiddo is going to come to me. We're going to have a conversation. It can be about anything. It can be about music. Right. But then we're going to have deeper conversations and deeper conversations. So to me, it's all about the authentic relationship. And then what we just what we talked about at the beginning, voice and choice. Right. If I ask that kiddo, what are you into? You know, you tell me, what are you into? It could be soccer. It could be music. It could be a movie or whatever. I'm going to try and find a way to bring that in as long as it's, you know, appropriate, right? Um, so voice and choice, connecting with them on things that might be, uh, might be an interest to them and then things that might uh, be a common interest between us both. Authentic relationships, very trauma-informed. And then also I think another key is ensuring that your space is psychologically safe, right? So you are going out of your way to make sure that it is widely known in your school or your district or whatever organization you're in, that when it comes to you, when it comes to you, you are a safe person that can be trusted and that cares. I love that. I'm, I'm like shouting, amen, I agree. Um, I, I love that authentic and that co connection piece you both mentioned. And Damien, you, you totally like, just made my head fill with memories from being back in the schools. And that was always my go-to like, and music is my passion. I have a weird like memory for it, which always obviously helps out. But when, when I would, when I could remember a kid's favorite band or their favorite artist, like that, even beyond their name, like I can know your name, but then if I remember, oh, you're actually into this. And I actually think that's cool about you. 
we suddenly have a deeply personal connection that transforms everything. It's like I have a whole new path that I can work with you on now from a motivation standpoint, from a connection standpoint. And then that leads into a place where I can push you and try to get you to do some of the stuff that you may be resistant to within a school setting. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about all this. Yeah, you're spot on. You're spot on. It's a, there's a counseling technique called problem-free talk, and it's all about just finding those authentic relationships, finding ways to connect with kids. And then once you have those relationships, then absolutely, if there's if there's apathy, if there's um, disengagement in the classroom, then you're gonna you're gonna put you're gonna start pushing that kid. You know, I know that you can do better than this. You know, we we talk all the time. I know that you can you can perform. And when there's that that trust between you, you're going to see kids try. So good. Hey, we are out of time. I wish I could keep talking with you uh, both about this and, uh, and I, I'm going to push the do. applause. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I want to conclude with. I want to give you both one last question and I'm going to put up some contact information um, in the background while you're talking. But the question is this, just tell us one thing right now that's either giving you hope or I want you to brag up a success that you've witnessed uh, recently that you wanna that you wanna shout out a little bit. I'll let you pick. Let's start with um, Damien, and then we'll go to Lays, and then we'll wrap this up. And I'm gonna put up some contact info in the back while you're talking. Something that's given me hope and here in Kentucky is we're starting on a social emotional learning framework for our state. Um, so we know that SEL is something that all of our kids need and our adults need. So we're starting with adult SEL. You've heard the phrase, you know, put your own your, your own mask on first. So we know that starting with adults is really important. And then and then uh, teaching them how to implement social emotional learning with kiddos. Um, so that project absolutely gives me hope. And I'm excited that more and more kids in Kentucky will have access to, again, figuring out who they are so that they can figure out who they want to be. I'd say that's a success, too. That's hope and success, man. Blaze, what you got? Uh, OSG. OSG gives me hope because uh, Off School Grounds Coalition, the brilliance of Dennis McKeezy, who took these little islands of schools that were in areas that were underserved in the inner inner city as he calls it and he brought them all together and we've been much stronger and everyone's been great and just the power of community i see it happening every day through the off school grounds coalition so yeah that gives me hope because if we can continue with more osgs out there i can guarantee you um that next gen, we won't have the same problems because one time he, I hear a lot of people talking about how things were 40 and 50 years ago and how some of those problems are still here. Well, it's our job to fix those problems. So I don't want to come back 30 years and say we still have the same problems we have today. We have the obligation, we have the opportunity and the space to fix these problems. So that's where my hope lies. Shout out to my OSG family. Shout out to Why Try and shout out to Dennis McKeezy. Dennis McKeezy. Yes, McKeezy, Akbar Cook, um, yeah. OSG. I've had a chance to to visit them, um, to to sit on and to sit in on some of their meetings. It's incredible. Um, it, I always feel welcome. Um, they're always hyped. They're fun. Uh, I love it. You've got a great family over there. Yeah, definitely. And welcome to the family. You're a part of the family as well, Dr. Swinney. Please get involved. Be a part of us. And we de we're definitely going to get you some OSG gear, man. You got to hit us up, man. And everybody Love go it. to the official OSG.org or go to OSG on IG and just type it in. Our uh, our meetup is always open. So you guys can come in. We'll be there tomorrow, four o'clock. Come in, have a good time. Enjoy us. Mark's there. He'll show you how to get there. And, and listen, man, this has been a pleasure to me. Thank you for having me. I'm humbled. And um, I'm here anytime you need me. Salute. Yeah. Big shout out to Christian Moore, Mark Merrill for making this happen. Absolutely. Uh, Jason, Jason, thank you for facilitating. And Lays, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. Very good meeting you, Dr. Sweeney, man. You're, you're, you're a G. And in, in my business, we call you a G. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate this, that. This right, is so good. I'm going to add my endorsement. You know, the thing that's given me hope is a couple of things you said. First of all, Damien pointed out that we need – non-traditional eyes looking at these and and shouted out the importance of Lazes Lazes perspective on this I could not agree more and then the other thing that Lazes mentioned a couple of times which I absolutely agree with he keeps talking about how 
the, the kids are going to be all right. The kids are going to fix this. These kids have incredible vision. They are incredibly resilient and they're going to do some remarkable things. They're going to fix some of the problems that we're trying to fix and maybe haven't been as successful, but we got to do everything we can to empower them. And I love that community approach. We can do this together. Um, I just want to give a shout out to our panelists. Give our panelists, uh, Dr. Sweeney and Lays, a big round of applause. Thanks for showing up and bringing your A game. You did, uh, you did so wonderful today. I think it really resonated with our, uh, with our attendees. The, the chat room was, uh, was fantastic. And then in conclusion, a huge shout out to our attendees. Um, you all are showing up here because you're, you're just as passionate about this as all of us are. And I tip my hat to you. This is still a tough year in education. And we're going to be trying to make up ground that was, uh, that was lost over the last year and a half for a, for a minute. And we're going to have to do this together. We're going to have to put resources and perspective together. But, but we can do it. I'm so proud to be an educator, to be part of this group. And I'm so proud to be, um, to be friends with, with these great individuals like, uh, like Lays and Damien. Thank you so much. That's all I've got. Should I play this out with some music? Absolutely. I think it would only be appropriate. <laughs> always, always.